So today I'm going to show you how to do a male urinary catheterization. First thing you're going to clean your hands um, and then you're going to clean your trolley with a, um, an alcohol wipe and then you're going to set up onto your trolley. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open um, a sterile catheter pack. So you open it and you place it onto the center um, of your trolley and then just by touching the corners of uh, the pack, you open it out carefully. So you don't touch anything that's in the center of the pack um, because that's your sterile field. Now in the catheter pack, there is um, a disposal bag. So just reach in and take that out. There's a yellow bag. Um, you can put your hand into that and then you can rearrange everything that's in your sterile pack. So you have some um, wipes and you have a set of gloves, you have a fenestrated drape, some plastic forceps, um, cotton balls, and some gauze squares. And then you can just place the yellow bag at the edge of your trolley, and you can use that to put your waste in. So everything else that's required goes onto the center of this pack, um, and that includes um, the catheter. Now you choose a catheter, usually a size 14 or a size 16. You open it away from the sterile field and then you place it into the center of the sterile field. Um, this is a silastic catheter and so contained in it is 10 mils of um, water with which you will inflate the balloon. You need some local anesthetic and some lubricant, so we use Instilla gel. It comes in a 10 mil syringe. Open it place it in the center of your sterile field without decontaminating. And it's probably advisable to open two packets of it because um, if you use plenty of lubrication, the procedure is a little bit easier. You also need some sterile gloves. Um, so I would recommend that you use two pairs of sterile gloves in your size, open them away from the pack and place in the center. The... Uh, a catheter pack does come with a set of sterile gloves, but they're usually of a medium size. They have no powder and they can be difficult to put on. So I recommend that you use two um, good sets of sterile gloves. The last thing that you'll need then is some, uh, something to clean the patient with. And we use uh, Normasol, which is sterile water. And it comes either in a large 100 ml pack or two smaller 50 ml. And you will need um, 100 mils of it. So either use a one big pack or two small. Again, pour away from the sterile field. Try not to touch it. Pour the, the, the sterile water onto the cotton balls. Okay, so all of your rubbish can go into your bag. Just check that you have everything in place. Choose the collection bag you want to use. So for this patient, we're just going to use a regular urine collection bag. If the patient was sick and needed urine monitoring, uh, hourly or in monitoring, you would use a, um, an hourly collection bag. So open up your sterile bag and place it somewhere close to the patient because you're going to need to connect it up. It doesn't need to be on the sterile field. I just place it close to the patient. So check you have everything in place. Check you have water. Check you have the right catheter. Um, check that you have your urine bag close to the patient. And then the last thing is to prepare the patient and to put, place an inco sheet after, uh, uh, under them. So it's at this point that you would remove the patient's clothes and their bed clothes, and you would place um, an inco sheet underneath them. So you may need to get the nurse to help you to lift the patient up, um, or the patient may be able to do it themselves. But this is very important to protect the bed underneath um, because it can be a little bit messy. Okay, so I have everything ready. At this point, I go and I wash my hands. So I do a full... Um, sterile hand washing uh, technique and then I come back to the patient and I put on my gloves. I'm just going to do that. Um, it's important to say that I'm also wearing an apron at this point. Okay, So I've washed my hands properly, I have an apron on and I'm now putting on the first pair of sterile gloves. Okay, So the next step is to clean the patient and to set up a sterile field around the patient. In order to do this, you take some of the cotton 
uh, wool balls with the forceps and you can use the gauze squares to hold the patient. So I'm now holding the patient, okay? Um, so my left hand is what we call a dirty hand and, or it's not sterile. And you clean all around the foreskin with the saline, dispose of your um, rubbish and clean a second time with the foreskin down. You can then retract the foreskin with your left hand and using the second set of forceps and cotton balls you will clean around the glands once, twice. Okay, so now the patient um, has been cleaned. My left hand is dirty, so the best thing to do is to remove your left hand from the patient, take off both your gloves away from the sterile field, and change your gloves to a fresh set. So what that means is that both of your hands are now sterile again. Um, and it's much easier to catheterize with two hands the, than it is with one. So this is the point that we change our gloves. And once we've the gloves changed, we will then put on the fenestrated drape. So again, when you're, when you're using a drape, move away from your sterile field so as you don't contaminate it. Shake it out and place it over the patient. Okay, close off all the area that is not, has not been cleaned and then you're ready to go. Okay, first thing you're going to do is you're going to use some Instilla gel. Now 10 mils or 20 mils is what we recommend. The most important thing is that you put this in slowly um, with the penis at 90 degrees. So if, when you inject this into the meatus, you want to make sure it's not bubbling back at you. You want to make sure it's going down. If it does start to bubble back, we'll then take a second syringe and inject that 10 mils as well. The slower you do it, the more effective um, it will be. So what we're going to do is you hold the penis at 90 degrees, you insert the Instilla gel, which is a lubricant and a local anesthetic, and you inject it slowly so that it doesn't bubble back at you. Okay? If you relax your hand uh, so that you're not obstructing the gel, it works better. Okay, it takes one or two minutes to work. So after I've injected 10 or 20 mils, I will uh, give the patient a few minutes so that um, the, the lignocaine can work. And during that one or two minutes, I do a few things. I take my catheter and I get myself ready. So I open the catheter pack, just to open it so that the tip is exposed. I make sure I have water to inflate the balloon. So I would open that. And I do another check to make sure that my bag is close by. Okay, now so the urine is going to come out reasonably quickly, so it is a helpful tip to take the little tray from the catheter pack and to place it underneath, okay. And then with your catheter open and everything ready to go, you put the penis close to 90 degrees and you insert the tip of the catheter into the, into the meatus. Then put the penis down parallel to the ground um, and if you pull slightly towards the patient's toes, um, you will straighten out the urethra and it's easier. And then keeping the catheter in the pack, you pass it through the urethra until you meet resistance. Try and relax your hand when you're doing this. Um, and that resistance is the prostate. Maintain the catheter pressure against the tip of the prostate and it will pass through. The more lube you've used, um, and the more you apply a small amount of traction to the urethra, the easier it is. So you know you have passed through the prostate when urine comes into the bag. And you can see that happening there. Once I'm happy with that, I kink the catheter and I hold it with my left hand. Uh, and that will prevent a lot of flooding. Remove the catheter bag. Get rid of that. Reach over and connect your catheter drainage bag and connect it up to the catheter. You need to give it a good old push there to make sure that the seal is secure. And then watch one more time and ensure that urine continues to flow into the bag. And if it does, at that point, you can inflate the balloon with 10 mils of water. Once you have done that and everything is secure, replace the foreskin. Very important that you replace the foreskin. You just do that by bringing the foreskin back over the penis. 
tear your drape down from the center and remove everything from around the patient. It's hard to do this without making the patient a little bit wet. So you can take the little cloth that comes with the pack and dry the patient. Take off your gloves, your apron, put everything back um, onto the trolley and put it into a yellow bag and then into a yellow waste bag on the ward. Um, just be sure that you document that the size of the catheter that you used and that you replace the foreskin.